Tuesday, and that means it's No Filter Tuesday. And today's guest is the face of African music, not even African music. He's just inspired so many people in the world and other musicians too. He is humble, kind, a true, true artist in the sense he, he just lives in the studio. He has countless accolades, but doesn't care about them. That doesn't define who he is. And he's my little brother. His name is Starboy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only, Whiskit. Yes. Yes, Hi, brother. Good to see you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank it's you. Always see you. I'm so honored you could fit me in between your tours. <laughs> He's touring a lot. <laughs> and I have a few questions for you. Yeah, it's good. So, I know your schedule is rough, and you just came in from a, another. Where were you? Yeah, um, I was in Guinea, um, in again. So I just saw you on Saturday. Yeah, I came from London and I left uh, hours after that for sure. So you did London, Lagos, Lagos, Equatorial New Guinea. And back. And back. <laughs> and December is always like this, right? Yeah, every time, every time. Every time. So I know that you can do in December up to two, three shows a night. Yeah, sure. And that's normal. That's normal. That's very, very normal. You know, like because of the COVID the restrictions and all of that, you know, like um, I decided to do very few shows. Which, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, definitely, we still got a couple of shows to do. <laughs> but you came back home. I have to, man. This is I need my yearly dose of greatness. <laughs> you need it. You need it, man. You know, there's nowhere like home. How long were you out? I was out for almost a year. Wow. Like 11 months. I hear you about that. I miss my dose too. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, so, man. I miss the humidity, yeah, everything. Right, the sun. Yeah. So, do you remember the first time we met? I don't remember the first time we met. I don't. Because, like, we've had so many amazing memories. I know, we have. We have. We've so, had so, so many Yeah, we've had so many great memories, man. So, it's like, I remember the exact time we met, but I knew from the first time we met, like, it's been family. You know, like was very family. gracious to me. I'm going to tell you, I remember. Tell me. <laughs> it was, uh, well, first of all, it was homecoming. I saw you. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was standing at the stage looking up at you. And I, and then I said, okay, now I understand why he's called Starboy. <laughs> and then I had the kids from Dreamcatchers with me. I remember that. And you I were so kids. sweet. You, could let, you let them come up on stage that. with you. And then after that, I went to like an after party, which was very crowded. Mm -hmm. And you were the only one that got up and said to me, take my seat. I remember. I remember. That's why he's I my brother. That vividly. <laughs> no, I, remember. I was being squished, not, not back <laughs> forward. And Wiz was the only one that was like, nah, 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 come and sit here. <laughs> Would you like a drink? Yes, please, Coca-Cola. <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure they gave you a coat too. <laughs> remember, oh my I goodness. Remember that, I remember that vividly, man. I mean, we've had some really fun times, yeah, but. Yeah, for real. It feels like a long time too. That's the crazy thing. I know. Yeah, like I know. Forever, man. I mean, seeing you on the stage on Saturday, yeah. walking to you singing live, took me back to some places because I haven't done that since Versace days, since oh, he was yeah, alive. Yeah, that's true. I remember that. And I loved it. I was I had no idea I was walking to till I got there. And I kind of, I suddenly got really panicked. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm walk, and I was like, I just it just became I, I am nervous anyway, but it just became a whole new nervous. I'm walking in front of brother. Oh my god. After I met you in Lagos, our next adventure was I came to O2. Oh, yeah. You were the first <laughs> Afrobeat singer to sell out O2 Arena. Oh, man. Very, very thankful to the fact. What did that feel like for you? Man, that felt amazing, you know. Um, it's always been my dream uh, moving in numbers. You know, I love I love moving and working together with all the artists. 
So when I had the opportunity to go into the O2, like I had the opportunity to do like a whiskey concert. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I want an African festival. So we can have like different art, African artists in the room to 20,000 people. That, that would feel great. Yeah. So that was why I pushed for that. Like, nah, let's do that. When we did it, like, I would have hated myself if I had done anything else but that. Mm-hmm. It was amazing to just see my friends, my colleagues on that stage. On the stage. 20,000 people in the room. In London, in the city that was Yeah, on a Saturday night. On a Saturday night. And I think it was like the, I think it was the Premier League night too. So it was crazy to have like, it was to have it sold out. I like just have people in there. That was amazing. It was magical. I have, I, I have the video. And yeah, I, yeah, it, was it was just crazy. people with lighters <laughs> everywhere. It was like crystals. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. and I got the honor of bringing you on stage, which that. was just, <laughs> oh my goodness. That was crazy, but I loved it. I really loved it. I it was amazing. So you've done a lot of firsts, yep. a lot of firsts, mm-hmm. and still doing a lot of firsts. I watched your YouTube's original, mm-hmm. which I absolutely loved. I've mm-hmm. never seen the live chat like that in my life. <laughs> I only wish that I could have that. It was, it was just 1.4 million off the bat. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen that. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, it's it's just to me, it just feels amazing when stuff like that happens. I, I don't even, I never think about it. Like, I never thought, like, oh, I'll have this amount of people online watching me. I just know, yeah, I'll have my fans and have some fans. I didn't think it was going to create, like, that type of impact that it made. You know, and um, to see, like, the young kids, like, artists that I work with tell me that inspired them to want to, you know, take it further and beyond it mm-hmm. makes me so happy. Yeah. Let's start at the beginning. So, your real name. How do you pronounce your name? Ayodeji Ibrahim Balogun. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I'm not going to try, but I, love, but I love the sound. Please excuse me because I just don't want to get it wrong. I don't um, what was your childhood like? Well, uh, childhood was amazing for me, you know, because um, I grew up on the mainland part of Lagos, and um, I grew up in Suriname. Like the hood, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that. Um, I grew up with a lot of sisters. My dad had like 11 kids, and 10, 10, 11 of us. And you got the baby? Yeah, I was the last child. I'm the only boy for my mom. Wow. Yeah, so like, it was exciting. It was kind of fun. So you got a ton of love yeah. and cuddles. I got, I got a lot of love, but I was, like, when I, as, as a young child, you know, when you start growing up, when I was like 10, I started getting beat up every time because I was always getting into trouble. <laughs> did you get into trouble? I did. I did. Well, I don't, what, but like, mischievous trouble. Yeah, like just yeah. like every normal child, you know, like you're just young, you just do, yeah. Just not and would you, would you ever send your sisters to protect you? Yeah, all the time, you know, like I used to try and put my sisters like, like, oh yeah. Cover for me. <laughs> <laughs> Cover for me and be like, you know, just tell them I went to do something for you. But yeah, but my sisters were like, I was lucky to have amazing sisters as well. So when I had to go to the studio, I had to hang out with my friends, they would just be like, oh yeah, I just sent them out to grab me something. Mm-hmm. When our parents come back, I you know they call me, like, you'll come back up right now. They <laughs> warn you. Yeah, so I love my sisters, man. They looked out for me, man. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> so you started performing, I read, at age 11? Yep. 11. What was your first performance? It was in church, and um, I remember, I remember so well. I think that's one of like the first earliest memories of my life as an artist that I'll never forget. Because mm-hmm. um, I had invited my sisters and my mom to come watch me perform. So like, I remember when I was about to go on stage, I looked into my sister's face and she was like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna mess it up." <laughs> <laughs> And I just went on stage and I did my thing and I just, you know, they were just mind blown and they were just very supportive. And what did it feel like for you? Is that when you decide this is yeah, what you yeah, want to do? I just knew exactly that was what I wanted to do. Uh, there was no, I just knew it. So like sometimes, like- yeah, sometimes you know, as a kid, you love different things. Are right? you trying to find something or what you, what you, what you love most or what's your, what's your passion? But to me, from the first time I got mic and I got on stage like I couldn't think of anything else like nothing else would be okay. <laughs> yeah. so talk to me about the convergence of music African music and pop music mm-hmm. um 
there is a lot of similar similarities in that, you know, because at the end of the day, we all draw inspiration from different places. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you can have sounds like Afro pop, you know, people say you know, some women Afro pop because like this is a combination of Afro music and pop. Music. Mm -hmm. So like um, it's so everyone draws inspiration from everyone. Like right now, I think it's most of the pop stars as well. They definitely have an element. Of, They're like, going in that direction. Yeah, so, yeah, so everyone inspires everybody, man, regardless of the genre of life or the type of music you make. Mm -hmm. like, you inspire each other. Now, being from Lagos, Nigeria, how did Fela Kuti inspire you? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know. I can't, I can't quantify the amount because it still inspires me on a daily. Because sometimes I see some of his performances and I'm like, whoa, well, I need to do that. <laughs> you know, um, Fela. His music and his artistry is second to none. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, for a musician from Africa to make that kind of music, live music, amazing mm -hmm. music, and this is like how many years down the line and it still sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? That's how you know he was a genius. And you do that's hear every you, instrument, don't yeah, you? Yeah, every instrument. That's how like that's what blows my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. Well, this has been years since this man has left. And his music still leaves him. Like this. Yes. Like it's even like he's been a bigger resurgence in the world. Of course, man. Like he got bigger even when he died. Yeah. You know, more people paid attention to his music and listened to it. Like, so that is one thing that, you know, that really inspired me. I want to make music like that. I want to make music that people will listen to 10 years from now. Be like, yo, that's amazing. For 20 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a big inspiration to me. His, his music and his artistry. But no, no, his life. <laughs> no, 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 it's like, you know, I don't want 28 lives. I don't want 28 lives. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a whole um, lot. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, he's a, he's a great musician. But, well, so, nice. explain when you started your first album, because I've listened to all your albums, mm -hmm. were you going to more to pop or you, or Afro beats? Um, when I was making my first album, you know, you're just you know, making music. Yeah. I didn't really have like a formula or like, oh, this is what I wanted to sound like. I was just making music. So whatever sounded good, we just kept it on the sound, put it mm. for the album. So it wasn't like there was a plan or a strategy. Or strategy to, you know. I put out my first song, people loved it. I was like, oh yeah, let's put out another song. <laughs> so I just, put, I just kept on putting out records. So there was really no strategy, but as the music evolves and you grow, you know, definitely tend to find your place and find yourself as a musician. So you just people can hear it. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Yeah. Well with your last album right now, it's such a maturity mm -hmm. and it was worth waiting for. <laughs> I'm glad and I, I can I say that I know that there's two other albums that you've done. Can I say that we uh, this has got an album out right now, yeah. but I can tell you these two other albums that we've well, never heard, uh, and I don't know if, we're ever gonna, if he's ever going to let us hear them, because if he just doesn't feel like he's there at, at that point, why did, why did you feel like after you did two that you didn't prepare to put those out and wanted to do this third one? Yeah, um, like I said, you know, Bella is the biggest version to my music, and just uh, from young, I've always just had this in my head of where we need to just do well. Excellent, just be excellent in your craft. So with my music, it's a it's it's cool to have because I have boys around, you have people around, you make music, everyone feels it's nice at that time, you know, we're all drinking and smoking and shit. So like everyone will always feels it's nice, but sometimes you have to just step back and listen, like that's what I do. That's what I do. When I make music, I step out and listen to it like just a normal guy. Mm -hmm. Like if I was this guy on the street, mm -hmm. would I like this song? What does this make me feel? What is, what is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah. Like, so you have to feel something. Like I make music every day, so it's very important for me to definitely pick. And it's true, you're always in the studio. Yeah, yeah, always, always, always. So like when I made the first one, I was like, uh, everyone was like, yo, we're ready to go. Let's put out the album now. Yeah, he said that's it. Yeah. Like, two, <laughs> two weeks, Mama's coming out in two weeks. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> then I just wake up one morning, I listen to it, and I'd be like, nah. I want to know how to work with another one, and I just keep going until it feels right. If it doesn't feel right, I'll never put it out. Did never any of, because I believe that Africa as a whole, yeah. not just Lagos, Nigeria, and, and Nigeria as a country, is going, is going to go through a positive change. It's time. Facts, 100%. 100%. Like, it is, 
there's definitely time for for that and um it just it's been years of the same shit. Yes. But when you look at it it's like years of the same shit that Bella in his time and era and place was fighting for the same of thing course, that right. you're fighting for now. But the crazy thing is if you listen to fellow records, that's why I, I, I feel he's a genius, you know, because if you listen to the fellow records, the things he was saying in the records are still the same things that is affecting the normal human beings right now mm -hmm. on the street. Like, what does that tell you? Nothing has really changed. Mm -hmm. you know, so there is definitely still need for change. But like, people need to be nicer to people. Like, the government needs to do what they need to do. Like, it just needs to be... So I feel they need to recognize first what an amazing country that they have. Nigeria is amazing, man. And invest yes. into their people because they, they know to. that they have that. And across the board, on music, on academics, right. academics is hot here. For real, like, because it's like, if you look at it, like, that's why I feel like Nigeria is such a special place. Right? It is, is a so, hidden gem. Nigeria is so amazing. It's such an amazing place because in the midst of all the madness that you're finding some of the most amazing musicians, some of the most amazing, you know, talents, mm -hmm. some of the most amazing, smartest people in tech, like, like all yes. around, just smart like kids. Like, so that's what's amazing to me that, you know, in the midst of all the madness, the bad government, all of that, like people are really, they're really great people in the country. So what does that tell you? If there are certain things put in place, of course it's going to be better. Yes, you know, of like, course. Education is there, like, and affordable. Of course you're going to have more And in the long run, it would be better that they really invest in their youth of today. Facts, because the youth are like the leaders of tomorrow. They say that, like, what well, it's like. The youth are really the leaders of now, because some of these youths that you're talking about, when it was young, like, it was 10, 11 being called the youth. You guys are, like, over 30 now. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Right. Something needs to change, man. What did you think about, and how do you feel about these music award shows yeah. <laughs> that, that tend to not to have an ignorance and not being able to give Afrobeat <laughs> the right name and labeling it. It's very upsetting to me. I don't like it. Um, first of all, you know, I'm a, I'm not a big fan of awards. I know. I, yeah. I think I've, um, I've been very vocal about that to some of my fans who know that. But, uh, it doesn't because, define because, who you yeah, are. It definitely doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define your success. It doesn't define how amazing you are. Because at the end of the day, you need to understand how words is a company putting together a show. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that doesn't define our great. You know? Yes. So I don't really. I'm not. Our words don't feel like nominate me or not. I really care less. You know, mm -hmm. as long as my music is touching the people the right way and they're feeling something the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm very content. That's my work. That's your work. Yeah, that's my work. That's my um, God bless everyone doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell me, how did you come up with Starboy? And which one was first, Starboy or Wizkid? It was Wizkid first. And um, I remember when I dropped my first album before that, when I dropped a couple of songs, I would go out on the street, like to the clubs. Yeah. And when I leave, you know, when I'm leaving, I'll say, you know how the kids are oh. going, like, all over <laughs> Now, let me just tell you this quick. When Wiz goes out, he doesn't go out often, but when he, and I'm like, when I'm here in Lagos, I'm like, please come out with me, please. He's like, oh, Mama, I want to stay home. But then he comes, and he comes, and he comes with his hand, with his pockets full of money, and he gives every cent. You do it. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen anything like it. it. He gives every cent away. I love, I love doing that. And they love you. <laughs> I love it. I love the like, like, if I wasn't a musician, I'd probably be on the street, you know, like, because, like, I don't, I'm not from a rich home. My parents are not wealthy. Like, you know, like, I changed the life of my family, mm -hmm. you know, through the music. I was blessed to be able to, you know, God used me as a blessing for my family. Mm -hmm. So, like, if, if, if I wasn't making music, I would be like every normal kid on the street. Did you feel that music saved your life? It definitely saved my life. Saved my life, saved the life of every life. Just, People that I love, like, definitely changed everything for me. Me, most especially. I don't know about anyone else, but like, my life, like, definitely changed my life. How do you deal with the whisked effect? Because it's, there's a whisked effect, you know that. Hey, How do you um, deal with that? I don't think too much about it. It's You're very like, gracious with people. Yeah, I am, man. I love people, man. You know, I grew up in a very loving and amazing family. 
So like, I've always known to always stick my neck out for people, look out for people, help people when they need it. That's what my parents taught us to be. You know, even when we didn't have much, the little we had, we shared it. Mm -hmm. So it was very important that, like, you know, that was important for me growing up. So yeah. I don't think I would ever. That's me. That's me. It's instilled in me. Yeah, I'm never going to change. You know? I love people. You've done a lot of collaborations and you always seem to, I see that you really do follow like the ones that are just about to break. <laughs> or, I, I watch to see who yeah, you yeah, follow, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then because I understand the similarities, I, I guess. guess. When, yeah, I, I, guess. I, I, I started when I was young. So like I was, in, I was like so young when I started. So like, and I knew the amount of no's I got, you know, before getting to where I'm at. So now that I'm here, Every kid that I see is like I see you in me, so I I'm just like I'm your biggest fan. I support you. I want you to be successful. Like even if you don't make a song, I just you I just always look out for them. I wish everybody well. That's that's my thing, man. Because I know how hard it is, mm. especially here to make music. Really, of course. Hard here? Hard. Yeah, of course. It's, it's harder in Nigeria. Really, <laughs> like period. <laughs> in, a com in a competitive way and. What way? Like, in like, in just in every way, it's harder to make music. It's harder to be in a studio with the right producers. Like, mm -hmm. it's harder for the record, for the radio to play your music. Like, it's not like harder that is a system. You know, like yeah. when you're signed. Yeah, you're definitely your record gets played on music. Rotation. Yeah. Sometimes here yeah, you get signed, and no one still plays your record. It's like it depends on who you're signed to. Because so you have to go to the like grease. So farms. do you have to personally go? I never do. it. Yeah, I never do it because that's always been my thing. Like, I'll never pay anyone to play my music. I'll never pay you to promote my shit. Mm -hmm. That's always been my thing. But like, people do it. You know, like, people mm -hmm. pay to get their records on the and I don't blame them if they do it because like, there's so much music. So definitely, you want yours to, you know, you want people to hear your stuff. So people, of course, pay. But then, what about that talent that just can't afford that? Yeah, that's uh, what's so sad. They yeah, that's in the. That's why. That's why I only like, you know, I only mess with the real talents. Now, some of the big names that you've done collaborations with, like Drake, mm -hmm. I mean, you were a huge contribution to Drake's mm -hmm. career. Yeah, sure. Like, and legacy. I, 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 like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say I'm a huge contribution because like, I don't ever see myself as bringing a lot to like. So do you like to part. do, I mean? But what I would say is at that time, that was amazing for both parties. And nowadays, are you, I mean, are you the horror? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you love Joya, and I know you like Rosalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love that you have a very eclectic taste yeah. of who you want to do collaborations with. That's right. I'm about music, whoever makes amazing music, wherever you're from, regardless. I remember saying to you, you want to do a collaboration with BTS, you were like, yes. Of course, like, <laughs> we still got to get, we got to get to Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We got to get to <laughs> Korea, we got that planned. <laughs> What's next, Liz? Who's, who's next? Is there, a, is there an artist that you, that you want to collaborate with that you haven't yet? Um, I don't think about collaborating with artists. artists. Yeah. I mean, I know. Just I let know. it happen. I let it happen. If it's an yeah, actual yeah, way. It happens, yeah. But um, I'm very, I'm, I keep a very open mind when it comes to that. Yeah. When it comes to collaborations, I keep it because you never know where you can get the best stuff from. Maybe young or old. Like, I just work with everybody. Do you like to work with your friends? As well. I like to be friends with who I work with. That's why I like. Oh, friends. Okay, <laughs> friends with you. Okay, because okay. it's just. I easier. was thinking. I was thinking more skeptical. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, because it's more easier, man. Because it's like you know, that's my brother. Like it's just easier when you're with your friend in the studio. There's no egos. You guys yeah. are just there making music. No one is trying to be a celebrity. The room. Yeah. This like. was, <laughs> but I don't think anyone would dare to with you. Because uh, I'm always me. I'm always me in any room that I go into. You are. You know, like, You're cons consistently yeah, the same. Yeah. If wherever you are, I'm not. You know, I won't change for you when I get in the room. But you know, that's why I like to just. Tell me about your fashion. Yeah. Because I heard. Did you say Pharrell was your style icon once? Yeah, that was a long time ago. And now? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. No, no, not anymore. No, no, no. Like right now, right now. As no. you speak, like I wouldn't go. Like, I think you could call yourself that now. Yeah, I'm. I'm me now. Exactly. <laughs> so I think no one got a style like me now. <laughs> <laughs> style boy is his own style icon. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, we got to do something fun. We're going to Milan mm -hmm. and doing Dolce yeah, & yeah. Gabbana, and that I amazing. that I 
All I know is that was, that was very different for me though. But it was the thing that I had you there to like, you know. But it <laughs> crashed. Their site. Don't you know why their site crashed? And I think they they realized it was going to crash when you walked into your fitting. I tried to stay in the corner and not yeah. be involved. And it was amazing that you had that incredible mask. It was. It was. That was a great. Moment. That set the whole thing. <laughs> it's was amazing. Great, that was a great moment. Man. I'll never forget that. Fashion is something I know you love. You love all the designers. Yep, yep, yep. And I feel that soon there could be a major collaboration there. Yeah. Well, I see that you should, I really do feel you should have your own line. 100%. Like, you know, we've, from when I came here, we've also been, you know, we've been playing with the Starboy brand, doing mm. stuff here and there, little pieces here and there. But, you know, my, because one thing is, whatever I do, I always want to make it the best. I do it to the best of my ability. Yeah. So, uh, when it comes to the fashion, I definitely do want to put out something amazing. But I, I need my, I need time. You know, I need yeah. to dedicate my time to actually make that amazing. Because I know exactly what I want. You know what you want. Yeah, so I need to, I need to dedicate time to that. But now I'm on the road doing shows and all like that. So do you do? Yeah, I try, but I'm terrible. I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible, but I can sketch out what I want you. To Oh, that's, that's 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 really halfway there. Right. I saw the YouTube um, originals, My Life, yeah. Then a Life with Wiz. Would you do a a full doc? Yeah, I would. I'm actually sh I've been shooting one for years now. So you got a lot of footage, yeah, a lot of content. I, love that, I, love one. I want to tell my story, man, because like yeah, that's what's gonna inspire the next kids. Absolutely, it was like me watching. The bands, Two, uh, Two Face, P Square tour, and like go around Africa. I remember the first time I saw P Square post a picture of a mistake in Africa, and they had like thousands of people in there. And I was like, I need to do that. Like, how did they get these people in the room? Like, I need to do that. And I remember the first time I did a stadium show and I had that kind of crowd. Like, it was so one of the most emotional days for me. You know, that inspired me a lot. So like, I don't joke show people to get like showing people game and showing mm. people how far we've come to mm. inspire because i know that how what that did for me looking at all these people so i want to make sure that you know the right young minds are being fed the right thing mm. you know, like they're being inspired by the right thing like oh, this is what we need to go this is you know we need to chase the value chase the music that's what you need to chase yeah. not the money the money will always money. money will always go yeah. and not the fame not the fame too you don't want to yeah. you know, that's going to kill you faster than anything Absolutely agree with you. What is your life like now, Fiona? Yeah, man. Shit, I feel I feel at peace. You know, relaxed, old. <laughs> old. He's not old. He's not old. old. He's yeah. my little brother. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 Please, no. he's twenties. Okay. Yeah, but you know, um, I got three kids uh, that I love so much. You know, my heart. And they have changed my life. How I feel and how I see things, you know. That's the biggest blessing in life. So yeah, man. Just I leave for them, you know, they're my purpose now. So when I wake up in the morning I'm like, I love when it's little Zion in South Africa. Zion is amazing. It was just like Zion is great. I love that he's He's there when you have all your sessions and your yeah, yeah, he's he's there, man. He's, he's he's active, he's always there. I love it when my kids are in the room. When I do stuff, man, I just love it having them around. That's, they're my joy. Mm -hmm. so why not? And how do you unwind? Um, I, know, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't think I, I don't know. I don't think I no, but it's a very innocent answer, actually. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, see, I don't do much. <laughs> well, I can tell you what I know. Tell she loves the beach. Yeah, I love the beach. It's the beach. <laughs> You take Wiz to a beach, to you're going to be leaving him there. <laughs> He's not coming back with you. And hence, you are a crab. You are a crab. He comes out, he's with kids, yeah, star yeah, boy. Then he back. goes into a shell and yeah. goes to the beach and he's not moving. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was like, I was at the beach on Christmas, New Year's. I'd just be there. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I get close, Wiz, are you coming? The president wants to know if you're coming to his New Year's party. I'm coming, mama. Two days later, where are you, Wiz? I'm still at the beach. <laughs> Sitting in the beach. sand. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I love the beach, man. That's 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 just something you get from the water. You know, just calm. So I just it is. Yeah, I love to be around. Well, you said to me that day when I was there with my mom. I bought my mom. Remember, yeah. you said, "I love to dream. Makes yes. me dream." Mm -hmm. 
this album for me, you should be so proud. Yeah, I am very proud. You should be, because honestly, it's just, I understand now when you would say to me, Mama is not just there yet. Mm -hmm. You are such a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. It's the sound. Yeah, People can just put out music and you just, it's the quality of the that's sound true. and the smooth and the flow. People put out music every day. So but I feel how like... Do, how, do, how, do you, how do you separate yourself? It's just about making it music. That's, you know, like, so this album, like, this is one of my favorite albums I've ever made. You know, because I literally sat down. There was an intention. Mm -hmm. I was intentionally like on it. Like, yo, we have to make this a great record. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm very, very proud of this work. Very, very proud. I'm very proud of the musicians that I work with. Was it a new group of Yeah, it was post new old, you know, like I work with my friends like you know, SARS, Legend GBs. I've been working with them since my first album. Mm -hmm. you know? And um that's never gonna change, but every time I just always try to like, you know, work with new people. Did you do any did you do any tracks in Jamaica? Yeah, I did. I did no 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 not I did tracks in Jamaica but they didn't make this album. Yeah, you know, I was in Jamaica for a month. I know. Yeah, I went there. I was supposed to be there for two weeks. <laughs> See, beach. Where were you? Beach. I, was like, beach. <laughs> I went to Jamaica. I saw all this water and fish. I was like, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was there for a month. And I remember I probably recorded, I finished one song in Jamaica. Yeah. I couldn't finish any other song because I, like, I was always at the beach. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I think it's fair to say, like, Gucci slippers, this is an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I loved Gucci slippers. Mm. It was my New Year's song 2018. Oh, Gucci slippers. Oh, yeah, 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 2018. Yeah, and Ghana. Song. And when you were on the beach when I was playing that. And yeah. I'm, I said to you, Wiz, you're like, no, I wish they hadn't put this out. Yeah, because it's it was not a supposed leak. to come out. You yeah, said it was, it a, was leak. a leak. It was a leak. come out. But I mean, Wiz, you've got a lot of songs. Do you think like one day you'll put out? A gift for us, and that would look like <laughs> with Star Boys, Star Boys, on Star Boys oh, secret really? songs yeah. or secret stash of yeah. songs. Or... I, I might, I, I may eventually. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of music there. We have hard drives and hard drives of music just laying everywhere. Like, there's so many music, so much. We have a lot. Yeah, maybe. I just yeah. feel like you're just. This this is like for me. This album is just a new beginning of something new. Definitely. It's a I new, like it's a new, a new artist, artist, man, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I I had to literally sh like share everything. Like I recorded this album like a new artist. Like that was the mentality I had in my head. You know, I never thought it was like being in the studio. I'm like, oh yeah, whiskey. This is what I'm at now. I was like in there with musicians and just you know working together mm -hmm. you know, with people without no ego. I always say you yourself like a blank canvas. Of course, man. You had to like it's like you're going to paint a new, you know, a new painting. Mm -hmm. Just a black canvas. You just what comes to your head. Just let it, let's let it happen organically. I don't think too much of it. I just started as a new artist, and right now, the unknowingly to myself, it has actually really helped me really find my sound. I know it's crazy. I'm saying that now. Like it's been years of me making music. But you know, you're in your you're in your certain retirement. Yeah, yeah. So he just he just made me find a special sound that I you know that I've always wanted to find. You know, so I, I, I love that. I'm very happy proud of you, little bro. Thank you. I'm very proud, <laughs> and I'm so grateful you could sit with me and do oh, no filter. Man, come on, man. I mean, anything, anything for you. you know I that. love you so much. <laughs> you know that, you know I'm trying that. not to because it's COVID time. <laughs> I to ask you, how has COVID times been for you this pandemic? Well, you know, it's been it's been crazy for all of us. You know, it's been a man. Cause you're a quiet person. You really don't like to go out. Anyway. To be honest, I, I I feel like it was it was a very positive thing. For me. <laughs> I was just gonna say Sorry to say that. I know because a lot of people no, you know, like because they had a lot of bad sides. Because <laughs> I literally didn't go nowhere. Like I I'll be in my house. I don't go nowhere. I you don't. Like, you're not. You got, it's a homebody. My house, studio, shows. Back in my house. Maybe go grab some drinks with my friends. Back in my life. I don't like going out. So like COVID was like it was more like, yeah, stay giving you more time to stay in. But at the same time, it helped me like just pay attention to more stuff, spend more time with family. 
Yeah. Finesse the album more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. Never stop. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it just helped me, like, you know, spend time with family, man, which is something that I, you know, I'm a big family guy. You are. I'm a big family guy. And I really you are definitely a cancer. Yeah. True and true. True. Like, yeah. I, I haven't spent time with family in a long time, so this year was, like, a wonderful family. And I appreciate that more than anything else. I want to do that. I feel like, for me too, I got to reconnect with my family, even though I lost my grandmother, but it was, it brought us together. And we spoke. Yeah, we spoke yeah. about that. And I feel like, but I know it's a sad time and it's a tragic time, challenging time for a lot of people, but I've really enjoyed this yeah, time to yeah, just like yeah, man, be with myself. Because we're, we're all human beings, right? And like one thing that God has put in all of us is the, is the survival instincts. Mm -hmm. So regardless of anything, we human beings, we always try to like, it's COVID, but then you find your comfort, find your happiness in that, find you know, learn from your mistakes and just keep it moving. That's why we're human. So I feel like COVID was like it was it was a speed of sweet experience for the world. Yeah. yeah. We had to go through this. Yeah, we had to go through it. Just you know, God 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 test you. God will test the world. I feel like that's like the biggest test that God has ever like. I feel like when God God just did that to test the whole world. Yeah, but, I, but I feel I like it brought I out it brought out some true colors of who people yeah, really it are. Tells you, yeah. Whether it's racism or you know Absolutely. and brutality, Absolutely. it's like you cannot get away with that anymore. Absolutely, man. And I'm so happy that you know that's that's a conversation. You know, like racism, police brutality. Like I'm so happy that that is a conversation. Yes, yeah. that needs to, like it needs to be constant. Oh, I don't think it's ever going away. Now yeah, that's I, it. Never, never. The young youth have found their voice and they're going to be heard no matter what. I understand what. how powerful that voice is, and like, which is one thing that I've always stood by. Like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm free. You know, I like to speak however I like. You know, how did it feel for you to see what was happening here? I, 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 felt, I felt great, man. I was like, yo, I, I felt amazed. Like, I've been harassed by the police countless times before I came with what a new way well, before I could get away from it for being me. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I was harassed and I was in uni, like I was harassed. I was arrested. Of course I was dealt with like slapped by police so many times. It's normal. But, but no, that's not supposed to be normal. That's I know, yeah. So for me, the fact that that happened right now, I was so overjoyed and that was why I was very vocal about that because it's something that needs to stop. Like the kids are already here. We are already dealing with no electricity, bad roads, bad governors, no jobs, yeah. terrible schools. Then you get out of school, you graduate, there's still no jobs. We're like, so what's the point? They're already dealing day to day. We are like the user dealing with those things daily. Going outside and getting arrested by the police or being profiled shouldn't be added to it. No. That's that can be controlled. So definitely we need to we need to fix that. You know, because like it's, 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 it's a terrible thing, man. Like you hear about people getting arrested, getting beaten for the most ridiculous things ever. People have lost their lives for the most ridiculous things ever. Like it's just sad to watch. Like, I just it feel is. Like it was the right time for you know for us to speak up as one voice. You speak up for a lot of things. I yeah, mean, I, 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 would very always, I would always speak. I would always speak media. my mind. You know that's what I said about like I know sometimes I say it and I say it, I say it mad and it comes out. Sweet. I never really seen you mad. Even if you're mad, it never comes out. Yeah, it doesn't come out like that. But sometimes, you know, I, I be, I, I'm, I'm very blunt. Yes. Yeah. So when I and sometimes you could just give me a look like <laughs> we're not going there, and you're not going over there, and we're going home. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like that, right? That's very blunt. I just, I just like to say, to speak my mind, man. Very important. I, this is, I think this is a very optimistic time because I think there is going to be change. And what I feel like with this COVID situation was Africa, thank God. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have it here. They have it, but it's not as bad as the West. Yeah. But that's a sign of let's not kill each other now. Yeah. What, no, this is the time where we need to embrace and help yeah, each other. That's right. This is the time of love, man. It's the time to spread love more. It really yeah. is. The world has gone through the craziest thing. God has tested us. So it's like it's very important for you. Like if you don't, if you don't believe or know anything else, going through this crazy time should have taught you everything you need to know about human beings. Because like what is important is people you love, people around you. Like 
that's the most important thing. So just spread love, man. Spread love at every time you can. And that's 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 what I try to do. I knew you were good in love, Dad. I wasn't worried about you. I know this is Wiz's type of, this is Wiz's pace. But some people could not deal with it. Yeah, I know, man. That's what I like. You know, I have a lot of friends that, you know, that, uh, that you know, were dealing with, like, their mental health. Like, because that is important, too. Like, not everyone had it sweet. You know, people had tough times during COVID. That's yeah. why I said it would be bittersweet. I had three, three, three friends like, taking that. Yeah, right. So that's, like, you sad all over the world, man. Like I said, but your music, you know, got us. Your music, 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 music is amazing. Is the, is like, the best healer. Music is the best healer, man. Period. Period. <laughs> Thank you for watching No Filter on my brother with me. <laughs> please like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Star Boy sending love. Do that. Subscribe. Watch. <laughs> Brown girl. Ah!